Manhattan Borough President Mark Levine is an innovator trying to come up with new ways to address old problems. And one of the things you're trying to address is the idea of building more housing in, in Manhattan, which has a, a high density. So what I'm told you want to do is to update zoning to create housing in Manhattan. What do you mean by that? And what neighborhoods do you think are ripe for rezoning? Well, first, thank you so much for having me on the show, Marcia. We have a real crisis of affordability and housing in Manhattan. The average rents are now over 5000 per month. So that is devastating to low-income people. But even middle-class families, teachers, bus drivers, nurses, can't afford housing in New York. We need more. We have to build more, especially more affordable housing. And people have said to me, oh, well, there's no room in Manhattan. So we scoured every block. We found 171 sites nine neighborhoods where through updated zoning and other measures we can build a total of 73,000 units, 30,000 affordable. Um, some of the neighborhoods, do you know there's still neighborhoods in Manhattan that are zoned for manufacturing? People are surprised, but it's very outdated code. Um, we want to update that to allow conversions to housing. Just one example of the way we can get people the housing they need at a time of real challenges with affordability. Well, what about um, building on open spaces on NYCHA properties? Is that a viable option? as well? Yes. In fact, we have a plan um, in Fulton Houses in Chelsea, which would build brand new buildings on the open spaces where the existing tenants could move into. They have brand new apartments. The older buildings would be torn down, and then you'd build affordable housing, mixed income housing there. So would the city do that, or would you have to get a private developer? They, in that case, the, the, the city is contracted with a private developer who would do the work and they'll access Section 8 money to finance it. Very innovative model happening there. Um, I think it's going to set a new standard for the nation. Is there money for that? Well, um, some of it's coming from Section 8 money, so it's federal. Some of it's coming because they are going to have some market rate apartments on the campus. But that's a way to pay for the improvements so that NYCHA residents don't live in squalor as they do currently in that development. So what about uh, privately owned properties, low density retail, vacant lots? Are they ripe for using as well? Absolutely. There are underused parking garages. There are vacant city facilities. There are single story retail where you could put housing on top. And we need to look at every site because we have a housing shortage and that's got to be our priority. We can do this. But one of the biggest problems, it seems, in Manhattan right now are all these vacant office buildings yeah. that are a result of changing work patterns as a result of the pandemic. What should be done about them? Is that housing? Do you ever think that the, the business world will come back to what it was pre-COVID? So, Marcia, we're probably at a little over 50% office occupancy now on an average day, and that's ticking up. But let's be honest, I don't think we're going to go back to a pre-COVID five-day-a-week in-person schedule and that's going to lead some leave some buildings vacant especially the older ones and in midtown that's an opportunity to convert to housing this was done after 9 11 in lower manhattan and it became a vibrant 24-hour neighborhood let's do that in midtown as well it won't be easy we can talk about the challenges but that is the right goal but would you have to take those buildings down and rebuild or would you just retrofit some can be retrofitted. It's harder with these big 1980s buildings that have big floor plates and there are not enough windows. But we think with the right tax incentives and the right regulatory relief, this can happen. There may be some teardowns as well, but we should push on all fronts. See, one of the things that I've always wondered about is the fact that are, there are a lot of these small businesses, mom and pop businesses, whether it's a deli, a beauty salon, a office supply store, card store, whatever, yeah. that are going out of business yeah. because they're, they don't have the clientele because people aren't coming there yes. to yes. shop, the bakeries, whatever. So will those kinds of mom and pop businesses ever come back? Or are we going to continue to order from Amazon and be done with it? They are going to come back. Maybe not if they're competing with Amazon, but there's definitely a desire for in-person experiences, for dining experiences, food and beverage businesses, and even interesting, innovative, quirky retail. Uh, around business, around office buildings, the challenge is they built a business based on having customers during the workday. And so they're struggling in neighborhoods like Midtown. But as we create housing and you get customers off hours, evenings, weekends, that actually expands business opportunities. And again, to refer to Lower Manhattan, we do have a much more vibrant retail scene down there. Rents are going to have to come down for retail. Really, that's just a fact. But how do you make that happen? I mean, the landlord just want to re increase, increase, increase. It's, it's a challenge. I think the rents have stopped going up because of the but pandemic. They're but they're not down. coming down. And they were too high before the pandemic. 
Um, this is a challenge. Rents have to come down. When they do, I'm confident that entrepreneurs will come rushing in with innovative ideas that maybe you and I can't even think about. Some people have proposed a vacancy tax to force the question. There's some challenges to that. How do you feel about a vacancy tax? I think we need these rents to come down. We don't want landlords warehousing these. We have, to, we have to consider creative measures to make that happen. So given the glut of office space that we already have, how do you feel about this new Penn Station project that's supposed to have like 10 office buildings, more office space? I mean, do we really need that? Well, I will say that in the office market, it's kind of a tale of two cities. The high end, more modern buildings are filling up because people like working there. One Vanderbilt, to give you an example, next to Grand Central, has filled up. Um, but it's next to Grand Central. Sure. So it's a I good commute. Yeah. Well, there, look, there should be offices around Penn Station for sure. But, but your question is important. We have to renovate Penn Station. We've got to bring it up to date. We've got to open it up. It's terrible now. It's going to be a multi-billion dollar project. We have to find a way to pay for it. I'm, as, I'm in favor of doing it as little as we need to in the surrounding neighborhood to fund it. But right now, we don't have a good source of funding. And um, the governor's put forward a plan that but would but create. But it's 10 buildings. Do you really need 10 more buildings? Some of it could maybe be reconsidered for housing. Um, and, and the plan definitely needs to be examined for impact on the neighborhood and quality of life and, and the pedestrian traffic and all that. Um, we have more work to do, but the bottom line has to be Penn Station. We have got to improve that experience. It's the busiest transit hub in North America, I think in the whole Western Hemisphere, and it's, it's just disgraceful the condition it's currently in. How do you feel about moving Madison Square Garden? Well, in an ideal world, great, because it would open up Penn Station and we could have higher ceilings and more light in there, it would be a game change. Um, it's, not, it's not easy to figure out where and how to move it. And I would certainly hate to hold up improvements in Penn Station on that because I wouldn't want to wait another decade or two. We've got to start working on Penn now. But, you know, James Dolan, who owns Madison Square Garden, is about to get re-upped for another, what, 10 years of having a franchise. Is that a good idea? Well, he's asking for a renewal of the franchise agreement to continue operating there. I think they're asking for an indefinite approval. Last time they got 10 years. Uh, this is something that I'll have a say in um, as part of the land use process. And there's a, a lot to work out here, um, including the impact on the so neighborhood. it's not going to be a rubber stamp. It will definitely not be a rubber stamp. Not in the city council, not through my office. So there is an issue with James Dolan using facial recognition technology. Outrageous to decide who can Horrible. come in and who cannot come in. Should that be part of the, the debate about whether he should get a franchise uh, renewal? I don't think it, it's allowed to be directly considered because this is a narrow land use decision, but I do want to say that it's, it's outrageous and I think it should be outlawed. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an abuse to uh, use personal vendettas to determine who can come to a Knicks game. So, so can, the, can the police department make it outlawed? Can the city council outlaw it? I mean, what has to happen for somebody to say to Dolan, hey, you can't do that? It, it would require legislative action. I, I presume it could happen either at the city or state level, and I think bills are moving in both arenas, and I would certainly support outlawing that. Uh, it, it's just, it's unacceptable. It's an abuse of power. Uh, th these are public events, allow people to come and enjoy the Knicks. They might actually make the playoffs this year, my goodness. You don't want to deprive anyone of that pleasure. Thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.